Hello and welcome to Worship with Lord of Light Lutheran Church and the Lutheran Campus Ministry at the University of Michigan. I hope that you have some bread and a festive drink available because we will be sharing communion together later on in the service. Um, welcome and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us, we exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious Lord, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away. And we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Praise the one who breaks the darkness. With a liberating light, praise the one who frees up prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who frees the gospel. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak 
and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. And woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with the commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge 
so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I went, might win more of them. To the Jews, I became a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother in law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went out throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O oh Christ. You probably heard that last week a freezer broke at a vaccine storage site in Seattle. If they weren't used up, some 1,600 doses were going to go to waste. So, tweets and texts were sent out. Anyone who can make it out late at night, anyone who sees this text, come and get vaccinated. For the next six hours, medical staff ran up and down the line of people waiting, trying to triage who should be next in line, and then at the last, telling people to text and call anyone they knew who hadn't been vaccinated yet to come in. The last dose went into an arm 15 minutes before it would have expired at 3.45 a.m. I imagine, I hope, that the staff went home that night and crawled into their beds, exhausted but elated at what they had accomplished. But I also imagine that given that we're at the very beginning of a long vaccination campaign during a global pandemic, that at least some of them woke up a few hours after they went to bed, gulped some coffee, and went right back in to ensure the next day's vaccination appointments were kept. The pace has been relentless for our healthcare workers. Our vaccinators are doing holy work, restoring people to parts of their lives that were previously inaccessible, offering the hope of seeing grandchildren or other loved ones and friends again. Not immediately, we know, but one day. But in order to do this holy work, there must be time for restoration. All too often, we celebrate those who work at such a pace, never stopping, never resting. We lionize people who never take a vacation, who never miss a day of work. We're one of the few countries that has no paid sick leave, no mandatory paid vacation, no mandatory 
paid maternity leave. And none of this is healthy. Jesus knew that in order to continue to serve, he had to rest. But notice that Jesus is not awoken from Simon by Simon from a deep slumber. Jesus knows that his grounding, his restoration, comes from taking intentional time to pray, to talk with God. His restoration is not reactive. It is proactive. His restoration goes beyond merely meeting his most basic physical need for sleep, which is also important. But in taking the time to wake before the needs of everyone around him to rise to his attention... Jesus takes a moment to be a part, to listen to the silence, to be with God. Martin Luther once said, I have so much to do today that I should spend the first three hours in prayer. I've often joked that Luther was never a mother, so he wouldn't have understood what an immense luxury that was. Because, of course, his wife Katie was taking care of the kids so he could go off and pray. But when our attention is constantly being pulled in all directions by multiple crises, whether it's bad news, the perpetual slog of the pandemic curve, midterms, or spilled milk, there is a need to get centered, to just be. Jesus reminds us that when the world is falling down, We can't do what we're called to do. We can't do our part to hold it up unless we are strong. That intentional time for prayer and restoration isn't selfish. It's essential. That we will be able to live our vocations more faithfully if we take the time we need to pray, to be silent, to breathe, to prepare. Stephen Colbert interviewed Father James Martin, a Jesuit priest, a few nights ago. In his interview, Father Martin spoke about prayer, the need for it, and the need to just do it. It's not about saying the right thing. It's about deepening that connection with the one who created us. There's no right way to pray, he said. Sometimes prayer merely involves looking at the waves, for instance, knowing that God is not the ocean, but contemplating that God's love is as deep and wide and vast as the ocean. That contemplation is a kind of prayer. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he told them to approach God as a loving parent, not an omnipotent deity. And I know I've said some ridiculous things to my parents, but they still love me anyway. And just as your parents or the people who are closest to you want to know what is on your mind or what is troubling you, God is also ready to listen. In the midst of a time full of anxiety, we are called to minister to people we encounter, both in person and online. Part of our ability to minister is making sure we have taken care of ourselves and taken time apart because even Jesus didn't work without stopping. And we are strengthened in our own ministry to one another because we know that when we do come to God in prayer, God is always listening. Amen.
Trusting in God's power to heal, let us offer our prayers for all who are in need, responding to each petition with words from today's psalm. We await your steadfast love. We pray for the church's many ministries of healing, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prisons, camps, and institutions, and for bishops and pastors facing illness of which we are unaware. We pray to you, saving God. We await your steadfast love. We pray for the health of the earth, for its myriad animals and their habitats, and for all created life that has been harmed by human misuse. We pray to you, provident God. We await your steadfast love. We pray for the health of people around the globe, especially for the people of Ethiopia and India, for international health organizations, for local and national medical services, and for school officials and teachers facing the pandemic. We pray to you, benevolent God. We await your steadfast love. We pray for wholeness in our nation, for the safety of our nation's elected leaders, for an end to domestic violence, for an end to prejudice, and for an end to civic terrorism. We pray to you, sovereign God. We await your steadfast love. We pray for a halt to the pandemic, for all who have contracted COVID-19, for health workers, for the prompt distribution of vaccines, and for all who today will die from the virus. We pray to you, compassionate God. We await your steadfast love. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, for those with chronic pain, for those experiencing despair, for infants born impaired and for the aged in decline, and for all whom we name here, for Tom, Allison, Nathaniel, Claire, Karen, Ingrid, Mason, Emmy, Sarah, Julie, Carrie, Adeline, and all those known only to us and to you. We pray to you, consoling God. We await your steadfast love. We pray finally for ourselves, for steady trust in your power and for health in our weakness. We pray to you, loving God. We await your steadfast love. We praise you for the faithful departed and for their lives of service to others and we pray that despite sickness and death, at our end we join with them to find our wholeness in you. We pray to you, eternal God. We await your steadfast love. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine he revealed your glory. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. You protect and preserve us and make the ordinary holy through the power of your love. Praise to you for all of creation, for making humankind from the very dust of the earth and giving us all we need for sustenance. Praise to you for preserving Noah and his family through their 40 days of sheltering in place and giving them the sign of the rainbow when it was safe to venture out again. Praise to you for bringing the Hebrew people safely through the sea and beyond the reach of oppression. In the wilderness, you provided them with manna and water from the rock as they journeyed into a new reality. Praise to you 
for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one, who turned water into wine, who fed thousands with a few loaves and fish, who healed, taught, and blessed all those who came close to him and those separated by distance, who loved the world so much that he became one of us, sharing our common life, suffering and dying and gloriously rising, breaking the bonds of sin, death, and the devil so that nothing could ever separate us from you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and this cup, we remember Jesus' presence among us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit. Make this bread and wine before us the body and blood of your Son. Enter into our locked rooms. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Strengthen and preserve us for the trials we endure now. Send us your Holy Spirit to comfort, empower, challenge, and encourage us to be a sign of resurrection to the world. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with those gathered on screens across time and space, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All who thirst, all who hunger, Come and be filled with the goodness of God. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life, and we are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. God the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.